Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Stephanie Baird about her short film Baby Making 101, which you could watch now on Pop Turnative TV on YouTube. Welcome to the show. It's good to see you. Thanks, Katie. Nice to see you also. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You wrote this short. You directed this short. In terms of your aspirations in the entertainment industry, did you know you always want to kind of wear many hats and get involved with different angles? Or did it kind of just happen for you? Yeah, um, I think it's always been that way for me. Um, Ever since I was younger, I was, you know, even in my like high school productions, you know, I, I was a choreographer. I was the, you know, I don't know, whatever else I did. You know, director, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So, Absolutely. Um, I've always kind of been like, I've wanted to have my hands on pretty much anything I could get, um, you know, no in- innuendo intended. But I feel like, especially, you know, where the industry is going right now with the amount of content that can be made, I feel like you have to be at least willing to wear many hats, right? Well, I think, um, I mean, it's it's... It's tricky because there are people who can do that one thing really, really well. And that's awesome. And I love that. Um, but for me, it, it, it was partly just trying to figure out what I like doing. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of us, we, um, you know, we get this one idea in our head. Like, I want to be X, Y, Z. And um, for me, I had to try a couple of things out and be like, okay, actually, I thought I liked that, but I don't like that. I really I like more of this kind of thing. So... Yeah. Um, that's why I think it's so important to try lots uh, of different things. Absolutely. Now, yeah, we dropped your short Baby Making 101 on Pop Turner TV so they could watch it now. It's exciting. I, I obviously, like, when I was preparing, like, what we were going to talk about in terms of going into deep about the, about the film, I don't want to talk too much about kind of what goes on in the film because I want people to go see <laughs> The YouTube, the video on YouTube, like I want to go watch it. So um, I will say this in more of a kind of a statement you can kind of add in on it. I mean, this is a film that you created that um, touches on an issue um, in relationships and when starting a family that happens a lot that I don't think is usually captured in TV and film. And, and, and I feel like that's what makes it really effective. Is that kind of safe to say I'm on the right track with that as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's kind of what I like to do as a filmmaker. I like to talk about the things that maybe people are afraid to talk about. Um, I mean, for me, it's a big one. It's a big ticket item. You know, do I want to have kids one day? And um, I'm not going to also give away too much, but I do think this is an important conversation is that, you know, I've, I, we as women are kind of raised being like, these are the boxes you have to tick to be a real woman or to be a real adult. And um and so we go through the, our lives doing these things, thinking that this is what we have to do and not really thinking about, is this what I want to do? Yep. So that, you know, when we have, when we are faced with, you know, here's that box that you had to tick and you're just like, oh, like, is this what I really want? Yeah, absolutely. And kind of to add to that a little bit with a, with a follow-up question, Stephanie, I mean, they're saying we're in like the golden age of like storytelling right now. Is it safe to say kind of adding to what you just said that one of the pow- most powerful things and the reason why we're in the golden age is because stories that weren't told that should be told are finally being told. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think the digital, um, the digital age, you know, like places like pop alternative TV who are giving voices to people like me is really important because um, you know, mainstream TV is successful because it has a formula that works, right? And not all types of media fit into that formula. And, you know, being able to say, you know what, I have $5,000, I'm going to make this film that speaks to me, and hopefully it'll speak to others. And, um, you know, and I'm going to speak my truth here. And I don't have to worry about, you know, the bureaucracy of, you know, who's going to approve what. And I'm just like, this is me, this is my story. And you're like, cool, let's put it on you know, <laughs> put it on TV. Yeah, yeah, literally, just for people that know. Well, first of all, it's fun. It's 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 interesting doing a lot of these interviews because we talk we talk a lot and we've known each other for quite some time. It's like doing these interviews. Sometimes people blindly go in and watch them, not knowing that we like talk like 
like oh, a good amount of the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he isn't just like green light everything. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Which, we had discussions. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's I just did an inter- it's just I just did an interview with Jesse Camacho, who's a friend of mine from Toronto, from Lock and Key. It was the same thing. It was like, are we gonna lie now and pretend that we don't talk like all the time? And now yeah. we're doing the interview. Um, you know. A great film, uh, Tamara and Fouad do an amazing job. What was it like kind of working with them? And how did they uh, get involved with the project specifically? Yeah. Um, well, I approached both of them yeah. because I, I have worked with both of them before. And they're both such incredibly honest, diverse actors. And, um, and their chemistry, though I didn't know it when I casted them. <laughs> Uh, but I had a feeling that their chemistry on screen would be really great because they both have that kind of like playful, um, the, they both have like playful personality. So no. um, I love working with them. They are incredible. Like I said, they're incredible actors, like for no other reason, just watch it to watch them act because yeah. the, the, the honesty and like the love that they brought to the story is just so touching. Um and they were also willing to play, like, um, not to give too much, but there's a bit of a montage that happens. And we just like went, you know, we're just like, okay, here's this scenario. Here's that scenario. And we just played and we had a lot of fun and it, I think it worked. Oh, it de- definitely fun. does work. It's amazing. And, you know, I feel like I always have the plug, go watch it on Pop Turner TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's a short film. I find it interesting and I kind of want to pick your brain a little bit about this because, you know, you like have wear many hats and I've uh, been doing a lot of amazing things in the entertainment and production industry. So I'm just curious to I me. Mean, the short film um, was often seen for a lot of people in the entertainment industry and it's still being seen as a stepping stone. You know what I mean? You make a short film, uh, you know, you get your feet wet a little bit, you get some reps and then hopefully you can make a feature one day. Um, I have been seeing a popularity in short films and short documentaries. And I have noticed a little bit of that boom Um, is in your opinion, is it still kind of the stepping stone component with short films or are they kind of creating their own kind of popularity and people are going in and they want to make short films. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it really depends on, you know, what you want to do and where you want your media to be seen. Because, like, if you look on social media sites like Facebook and Instagram, like, short-form content is really picking up. It like, is. Oh, people love to have that little bite-sized thing that's going to make them think, make them smile, make them laugh, make them cry, you know, make them, you know. And, and it can happen in, like, a three-minute to eight-minute short. Like, yep. you know, you don't need to have long content to touch someone um to touch someone's heart or to make them laugh and you know i think people like that because they can watch it on the streetcar on the way to work or they can watch it you know on the toilet during lunch break like pretty much no absolutely but it's it I, i agree it blows my mind too that the amount of content but also the kind of what you said like the instant access of it is something I still can't wrap my head around because I even remember like 2010 like you look at like you look at like 11 12 years ago and it was so different in terms of how we want we still like PVR things like there still was Facebook but it wasn't like watching things quickly like it's weird how it is now compared to how it was I find yeah and that's kind of the it's kind of scary uh, for like my own like time management skills, I would say is scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also really cool that you can just say, you know, like I want to watch some content. I'm just going to turn on my phone, you know, spend five minutes supporting someone yeah. that I, you know, I like their content and then like continue on with my day. Like mm-hmm. we were like, you couldn't take your, you know, desktop computer on the train with you. <laughs> you know? No, you couldn't. And speaking of supporting content, they can watch Baby Making 101 on Alternative TV. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it absolutely, and you know, another thing too that I'm noticing is you know the amount of 
stuff. Like, obviously, you know, in terms of if we look at the genres, like, I I mean, I don't think you can make a big case. Baby Making, Baby Making 101, Slice of Life, rom-com, has a lot of that going on. Again, we don't want to go into spoilers, but a, dra- like, a drama. Like, like there's there's a, there, <laughs> there's a good amount of drama in this. So, like, they got to see this. So, you can make an argument that it's genre bending a little bit. What do you think about that? Is Are, are genres, like, not pointless, but a little, like meaningless these days that they're just putting everything in there like what do you think about the genre these days um well i i deliberately bended genres in my short film Mm -hmm. um i'm happy that you picked up on that because it was (laughs) intentional um (laughs) i think yeah i think bend genres you know i think but it has to be with purpose you can't just do it for the sake of like it can't have no like it has to be part of the storyline you can't just be like an hour in absurdist now because then you're going to confuse everyone right but i think you know with my short film like i and again no spoilers but you know i wanted to start with this light fluffy comedy bubbly loving thing and then you know and then i i lit it differently in like in later scenes and i um we framed it differently in little scenes or later scenes so you know yes i think it's it's nice to have that freedom to kind of play with your creative where. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Absolutely. Um, there are definitely a genre. I, I, I like, I don't feel like you have to just put yourself in a box these days. I feel like, and I feel like just the minds that are the amazing people behind these amazing, this amazing content like yourself have the ability to, kind of expand on like what we see so i think that's an exciting thing i'm curious about your mindset when you wrap this project i feel like it depends on the projects i feel like if you ask someone that it was like a really like rough you know emotional roller coaster of a ride in terms of the subject matter which in some cases this has a lot of kind of intense moments that kind of hit you pretty hard um What's your mindset when you rap Baby Making 101? Was it kind of like, oh, man, this was awesome. I need a break a little bit before I go on to my next project. Were you like, oh, I'm motivated. Let's make another project. What was it like for you when you wrapped this project? Uh, well, when we wrapped shooting, we went into post-production. Yep. So for me, it wasn't really a wrap because I was working with – I was working very closely with the editor, Eric Metzloff, mm-hmm. um, on that. So I, th- I think like a week later, I went to Mexico and <laughs> – I was on the plane watching, <laughs> uh, watching takes and picking stuff for the editor. So um, <laughs> I wasn't seeing that. Co- I didn't see that coming at all. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So like both. <laughs> so I went on vacation, but I was, I was excited. I was excited to see it through to the end. And um, when we finished, um, like when we finished the final mix and everything, we were, you know, it was kind of bittersweet because it was the beginning of the pandemic. Like it was literally like two weeks into the pandemic. We're like, and we're done. We don't get to do anything because <laughs> the entire world shut down. So uh, in that sense, it was kind of bittersweet, but I didn't know I wanted people to watch it. So do, do you feel like there's still, cause you've also, you like you're behind the camera a lot lately, but you've, you also act and you've, you've acted like my roommates and escort stuff. Do you find from the acting perspective, it's, misconception that people don't understand sometimes like the ebbs and flows of like the work schedules sometimes like they'll see someone in something and then they see him in another thing and they think that person just has a constant work but that thing they just saw him in he could have done that like five years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i mean like that's kind of the cool part about again like this digital age right is that things kind of like go through cycles with their audiences as well right mm-hmm. it's like something that you published um you know five years ago suddenly popular again um like that like just to like go like completely stupid with it like that badger video is making a comeback from like 2004 oh yeah um, the badger badger <laughs> yeah it's true i forgot about that one <laughs> but e-bombs that world <laughs> all those websites just- remember remember e-bombs world oh there was there was some good ones yeah the badger oh my god <laughs> um and again, that's a silly example, but it's coming back. But yeah, at the same time, you know, like different projects have a different post timeline, right? Are so, you making a short film about badgers? Is that what you're trying to tell us right now? <laughs> yeah. I'm doing a, um, a live action film of the badger video. Of the badger video. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! 
Oh, that. that. <laughs> if, Anyone steal that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm gonna go after this and like watch that video probably over and over again because I completely forgot about that video. <laughs> um, Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn to the chat about your film, your amazing film, Baby Making 101. We are really happy at Pop Turner that we're able to have um, this amazing film of yours on Pop Turner TV so they can go watch it. So thank you for, for chatting about it too. This was awesome. Yeah, thanks so much. And um, really appreciate you you know, giving us this opportunity to share with your viewers. Absolutely. Well. Now it's the time. Now we, we've got a plan and we're going to get it out there and everyone's going to see it. Last also thing, kind of adding to your thing, what you just said about, I, I got I got, I got got mesmerized by Badgers. You said something really good and I had a, a good follow-up to that very quickly. I just wanted to say um, that, you know, you said the beauty of it, the digital age five years ago and then it resurfaces. I feel like, again, I keep saying no spoilers, but like, you also made a short film that doesn't really have a shelf life. Like this is something that happens to a lot of people, right? That's a big, that's, that's important too, right? Making content that doesn't really have an expiration date. Like I think you did that with baking, baby making one one Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice. Cause you get to, you know, it's like that slice of life that you said, right? It's like a slice of life film. Like this is stuff that happens and it'll always happen. And, you know, hopefully, you know, the conversation will change around it so that it's not always so awkward and clunky and, you know. Absolutely. And this is available on our YouTube channel, Pop Alternative TV. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? Yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere. Mostly Instagram. You can follow me at Stephanie A. Baird or Basic B Productions. Amazing. This has been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Stephanie Baird's film Baby Making 101 is available now on YouTube for Pop Turn on Pop Turn TV. Until next time, this is Stephanie Baird and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turn on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turn on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.